Most would agree that scientific outreach is a noble activity, and if done well, it can be equally exhilarating for both scientists and their audiences. But life as a researcher can be pretty hectic at times. It can be hard enough to find time for your own work, let alone to squeeze in extra activities. One young physicist who manages to juggle the two is Melanie Winridge, a nuclear fusion researcher who recently worked at the Cullum Centre for Fusion Energy, that's a site in Oxfordshire which is also home to the Jet Tokamak. Melanie has been chosen by the Institute of Physics as this year's schools lecturer, a role that will see her travelling the UK delivering talks to more than 13,000 students between the ages of 14 and 16. Today I'm here at Chapel on the Fifth High School in Derbyshire, the latest stop on Melanie's tour to see how things are progressing. Well, I was wondering, um, can you tell me a bit about what inspired you to become a science communicator? Yeah, I think it was, when I started my PhD, I started it because I was really interested in fusion. That was you know, what I really wanted to do. I thought that if we could make fusion work, then it would just be really amazing. So I had an interest in it from the outset. And so that meant that when people asked me questions about it, I was really happy to, to talk about it. And so. I found that I enjoyed talking to people about fusion and about what it was we were trying to do. And then also I was working at a laboratory, the Cullum Centre for Fusion Energy, where they have a PR department and they got me involved quite early on in helping with things like tours of the machines, the experiments that we have and maybe giving the odd talk and things like that. And so again, I realised that I really enjoyed talking about fusion and telling people what we were trying to do. So that's, that's where it started really. Is there anyone that particularly inspires you, anyone past or present you, you look up to as a really great communicator of science? I like quite a lot of different communicators. I particularly like Alice Roberts. So she did, um, she's not a physicist, but she does things like Coast and um, the Human Journey one. And I really like her. I think that she's very, very relaxed, but she gets across all the information very well. And I like her. Could you uh, perhaps describe your experiences being on the road giving the IP schools lecture? What kind of reaction have you had from the kids? They've been really good actually, more perhaps than I expected. I found that the, the students are really very attentive and they're always very quiet and listening, which is great. I don't have to, I've never had any behavioural problems, I don't have to put a lot of effort into quietening them down or shutting them up or anything like that. Uh, which is great and I think that I think I'm just very lucky I've got a very interesting subject fusion is inherently very interesting and energy is a very emotive subject so it's very relevant to people's lives so I think that they're quite happy to to listen to something about a new energy source so I've been very lucky in that respect. I was wondering, could you give any practical advice to other researchers who you know, maybe they want to um, get involved in communicating their research to, to wider audiences but maybe have no experience of doing that? Yeah I think that the first thing people always mention but is really important is to think about your audience. So to think about what age group they are and so what they will understand but also about their attention spans as well and what they're able to sit through. So thank you Melanie, so interesting. It's a pleasure. Um, could you perhaps show me an example of one of your demonstrations? Yeah of course, let's go and have a look. So what do we have here then Melanie? Well this is just a demonstration of plasma because when we do fusion we have to heat our gas to about 100 million degrees, so that's hotter than the centre of the sun. And if you do that, then the gas becomes a plasma, which is the fourth state of matter. And this is another example of a plasma. Wow. <laughs> this is like a cross between lightning and flames. Mm. So uh, both of these are plasmas. And essentially what's happening here is we've got a little gap um, between those two pieces of metal at the bottom and a very high voltage. And the only way that the, the current can get across that small gap is to make a plasma. So it has to strip some electrons mm -hmm. away from the molecules of the air and uh, those free electrons can carry the current. So that's, that's a plasma, you've got a charged gas. And it always gets a, a nice reaction from the kids when you, when you show this. Yeah, they like these ones, sometimes they ask if they can. Um, yeah, it was a really, really interesting lecture. I learned a lot about it. 
Um, plasma, I didn't really know that much about it before. I just knew that it was the thing in the, the globes with all the crazy electricity, so that was really good. I was the same because I didn't know it was like a fourth state. I only thought there was solid, liquid and gas. Um, and I really liked the thing when she did um, with the, ki- uh, the light out the kitchen onto the wall because I didn't know you could do that and that's something like a lot of people have at home. So it was pretty cool to see if you can do that and just see like plasma in normal day stuff.